Hello everyone and uh, welcome to another episode of Lanhoron TV, uh, Lanhoron and Orkiver Property TV. Um, I'm here today with uh, Chantel from Euro Budget Moves who's going to tell us all about uh, the realities of moving furniture and household items etc from uh, other countries into Spain and both from Spain back to other countries. So um, Chantel, welcome. Thank <laughs> welcome you. Welcome to the sofa. Thank you very much. Um, Thank you for coming along today. I uh, really appreciate it. I know I've seen um, your your company on social media quite a, quite a bit, um, yeah. and of course we get asked lots of questions about uh, <laughs> moving to Spain, uh, both from the UK, from Northern Europe, and from from other countries. Okay. Um, so, but first of all, t tell us a bit about yourself, your business, and, and you know how how you've ended up here. Yeah. So um, we moved over from the UK nearly seven years ago now, seven years in June. Um, when we were in England, we used to run um, a large removal company. We used oh, to do okay. storage, shipping overseas. Um, it was a, an international company. Um, and we, well, my husband became poorly. Um, oh, and <laughs> he's fine now. And, oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so he was diagnosed with cancer and went through a, a year's worth of treatment. Right. And uh, we decided that we wanted to take a break. Um, so we moved over here and um, continued to run the company while we were here, which proved quite difficult mm. um, being in a different country. And um, so we decided to sell. Um, and we took a, about a year, a year and a half off, had a break, and then decided actually, you know, we wanted to, to go back into mm. transport removals. Um, so we started Euro Budget Moves. Um, okay. We decided to downscale. We didn't want to sort of um, have such a large business. Um, so it was just sort of small transport jobs backwards and forwards from the UK to Spain initially. Um, and then um, we kind of moved into the whole of Europe. Um, so, uh, for example, recently we've just come back from Hungary. Uh, we go to Portugal, Germany, um, France quite a bit. Um, obviously, we still do moves within Spain, sure. uh, local jobs, and and obviously um, the across Spain. Yeah. Um, so yeah, um, that's that's it basically. Great. Yeah. Wow, quite an interesting story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sounds sort of similar to mine. I retired to Spain and then. Now we end up running <laughs> another know, business as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it seems, it seems to happen to a lot of people. Definitely. But uh, I'm glad, glad everything's well. And, yeah, uh, absolutely, and absolutely. Business is doing well. So yeah. um, we get asked a lot of questions. And I think probably let's start with the biggest one that comes up. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the B word. Uh, yes. Um, <laughs> how, how have things changed? Because uh, I know there's a lot more paperwork involved. But yeah. tell us how things have changed in terms of people moving stuff into Spain now. Yeah, so oh, Brexit. Um, <laughs> So for me, for my side of the business, um, obviously there is a lot more paperwork. Mm -hmm. So um, I do require documentation from customers, whereas before it was very simple. You know, if somebody wanted to move one item, yeah, that's no problem. Pop it on the van, off we go. It's not like that anymore, <laughs> obviously. Yeah. Um, so um, there's various documentation that I do require from customers, copies of passports, copies of NIEs, mm -hmm. a full inventory of the goods that need to go, along with um, dimensions, weights, and wow. values of in each, each <laughs> item, yeah. Um, so it's quite in-depth, um, mm. but we need that for customs purposes. So I then supply all of that information to our customs agent mm -hmm. um, for the export, if you're going from Spain to the UK, so from the yeah. export from Spain for the import into the UK. Um, when you're moving from Spain to England, mm -hmm. uh, there is an opportunity to um, void paying any duty okay. on your goods. Um, there is an online form um, through the government mm -hmm. website, um, which is called a transfer of residence form. Um, at the moment, so you'd have to go in, log in all of your details, yeah. upload your inventory. It's a bit of a process, yeah, yeah. Um, but it's worth doing if you've got a large load. So of if course. you've got a full van load, it's worth you know, worth mm. doing. Um, and um, it's taking sort of two weeks to be approved. Right. Um, and then once you've been approved, I would then get a URN number, that gets supplied to the customs agent. Okay. And then when you arrive in the UK, no duty is payable. Great. It's not reciprocated coming this way okay. <laughs> from, from the UK into Spain. Yeah. Um, so so it depends what you're moving. 
Um, mm. But duty can be applicable on the goods coming into Spain. Okay. Um, and that is at 21%, I believe. Is it of the value 20, of the goods? Of the value of the goods, which is why you have to do the full inventory. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> to calculate the value of a, yeah, exactly. of a used yeah. sort of well, Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's minimal because yeah. obviously it is used items, so household items, you know. Um, personal belongings, books, very minimal value. Um, really, they're going to look at sort of stuff like electrical goods, you know, sure. things like that, TVs, washing machines and what have you. But, um, yeah, I mean, household items, but it's all second hand. You've had it for 20 years, you know. Yeah, it's yeah. going to have minimal value. Um, so there is a, a longer process um, my side of the business to have mm -hmm. all of this information from the customers, supply it to the agents, get all the documentation ready for the guys to go. Um, and for them, it's a breeze. <laughs> driving it out the yeah, they have their paperwork, they hand it over, they get put in a green lane, off they go, Great. no problems. Before Brexit, it was horrendous for them. They used oh. to get stopped and searched and, you know, um, now straight through. It's, oh, okay. yeah, so I it's mean, actually made things easier. It's made things, that, it's made things easier for that. Yeah, okay. absolutely. So, yeah. I'd imagine, <laughs> I mean, I'm guessing, but I'd imagine it's really important to get the paperwork correct. Absolutely. Yeah. That's and that's what we're here for. Yeah. Um, so I will liaise with the customers, uh, make sure that I've got all of the relevant information, all of the correct documentation. Um, I do all of the work with the customs agent um, to make sure that that's all sorted. Um, and uh, they provide me with the documentation then for the guys to go over. So, Great. yeah, Great. So, so I, I deal with all of that. Nice and smooth yeah. and Nice and streamlined, yeah. yeah. Um, and we'll, we'll move away from, uh, from Brexit. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk that one out now. But, yeah. Um, you mentioned you deal with other other countries as well. Yes. Um, so is it a similar process? Or? No. So if you're moving within um, within Europe, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, then no, it's it's you don't need the whole customs documentation right. side of things. I do like to have a full inventory. Mm -hmm. um, I don't necessarily need the value of the goods because it, it, it's not needed yeah. for, for duty and customs purposes. Um, but yeah, so I would just produce a, a, a CMR note, so a note that shows where the, the goods are going from and to and what have you. Um, and, and that's sufficient when you're going within Europe. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a lot easier for us, <laughs> <laughs> a much nicer process. <laughs> um, so, and, and what are the, sort of maybe the, the top three questions that you get asked uh, all the time that, uh, that people regularly need to know the answer to? A lot of people ask, um, how much do you charge per cubic meter? Okay. We don't price per cubic meter. Oh, Some okay. companies do. Yeah. Um, we kind of factor in the whole job. Mm -hmm. So, for example, when a customer contacts me and says, I want to move some household furniture from England to Spain, yeah. um, you know, maybe to Mercia in Spain or what have you. Um, obviously, I need to know exactly where in the UK because Scotland makes a big difference it, it, yeah. to, to Dover or Especially Kent or somewhere. Prices, exactly. Um, you know, I need to know about access. You know, yeah. can, can we pull up in, in, in our van outside? Course, is there yeah. a walk? Are you moving from a house to an apartment? If it's mm -hmm. an apartment, which floor? Is there lift access? There's a lot, okay. a lot of factors that you have to take into mm -hmm. account when, when you're moving. Um, you know, for the, the last thing we want to do is turn up a, ha a, a property and we've got a, a 500 meter walk and <laughs> it's down tiny little roads that we can't get yeah. our van down, you know? So we have to it's account for all of this. this exactly, like exactly. Yeah. yeah, we've had that on many occasions. Um, so we don't tend to price on a per cubic meter okay. um, simply because there are a lot of factors. So when it's bespoke per Exactly, per yeah. yeah. So we'll ask sort of, you know, either, we will ask for the cubic meters, mm -hmm. how many cubic meters they've got or a list of the items um, so that we can work that out for them if they don't know. I guess um, if you're not used to working in exactly, cubic meters every exactly, day, it's quite difficult exactly. to, to so, understand yeah, so, to guesstimate. Exactly. So, um, if they don't know, then we just ask for a rough list or photographs mm -hmm. of um, the larger items oh, that they've got so um, we can judge. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, the only thing that I would say is that where before Brexit happened, we used to be able to move single items. So someone would say, I want to move okay. a box from, you know, from yeah. Alicante to uh, Kent. And we're okay. like, okay. Okay, that's fine, no problem. Now, obviously, because there is a charge for customs agents, so obviously we have our removal charge, yeah. but on top of that, um, there possibly is a duty 
charge, mm -hmm. but we have to pay for the customs agent. Of course. And the customs agent fee is £250. Wow. So for one box, that's not going to be cost effective. So would that be the same for one box? One box or, or a van load. Or for a van load, wow. Yeah. Okay. So at the moment, what we tend to be moving is like minimum half van loads yeah. um, because it's not cost effective really. Some customers don't think, it depends what they want to move. Yeah, um, to move one item or two items or five items, mm. you know, when they can get yeah, a yeah. half a van yeah. or, you know. So um, that's that's been a bit of a problem since sure. Brexit for us where we used to do like, we could make up a whole load of individual mm. items. We, we don't do that anymore. Do that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> so it's more sort of half van load. And, and yeah, half, yeah, 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 okay. exactly. So if we've got like a half van load going to England, uh, we will try and tie that up either with a, another customer mm. who's moving to England and has half a van load or we'll try and tie that in with a customer coming back from the UK to Spain. Okay. Um, so yeah. That's, that sort of leads on to, to one of the questions that, that I get asked a lot, and that's yeah. about um, timescales yes. uh, of the lead times that mm -hmm. it takes. Um, yeah. I know certainly when dealing with properties that people moving from the UK, yeah. um, removal companies are always a, a last panic because of the way the, the sales process works in yeah. the UK. But what sort of lead time realistically <laughs> is a sensible one for most people? Yeah, I mean, I would say people going from Spain to the UK, mm -hmm. if you're going to apply for the tour form, the transfer of residency, yeah. you have to allow at least two weeks okay. because obviously that form can take two weeks for them to approve. Sure. And I need that information to provide to the customs agent for you to be able to move. So I would say sort of three weeks, two, three, three weeks. weeks. Yeah. yeah. Um, coming this way, <laughs> obviously <laughs> you don't have that opportunity to complete sure. the form. So it's it's not so much. So I'd say one to two weeks. Oh, wow, um, okay. Yeah. That's a lot quicker than I would have thought. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah, it's not, so, it's not so bad coming back. Obviously you know that you're gonna have to pay duty or sure. possibly you're gonna have to pay duty coming yeah. this way. Um, so as long as you know that and mm. you have the documentation ready and you can produce the, the inventory form, yeah. um, it's a pretty straightforward okay. process, yeah. I, I would assume like most things, that the mo more notice people can of give course. you the, the better. Yeah. Of course, <laughs> of course. Especially, no, especially if it's part loads. I mean, mm. we we do have a, a warehouse, a storage facility oh, in, okay. in do Durkow. Storage as well? We do, ah, yeah. Okay. Um, so generally, if, um, if, for example, we have a customer who wants to move... Um, you know, half a van load, or, mm -hmm. or or it can be smaller if they're happy to pay for yeah, the, yeah. the fee. So, say they they have a half a van load, um, we would then put that into our storage. We could collect it from the customer if it needs to be collected, mm -hmm. pop it in our warehouse okay. um, until we can make up a full load, and then we would ship that over to that's England. That's a question we get asked a lot yeah. about storage. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. often we have people who maybe, particularly if they've got pets, they're going back on the on the ferry. Yeah. Um, and trying to tie everything in together. Exactly. Logistically, yeah. A bit of a so we 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 have the warehouse for that purpose, simply mm. so to help us make up um, loads going yeah. from here um, back to the UK. But also, obviously, people struggle for storage here. So yes. um, yeah. so we have both customers. We have customers who are just storing long term. Okay. Um, they've moved over with. Um, you know, a huge amount of furniture and the mm -hmm. house is tiny. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. so we, we, we do that. So obviously people can pay weekly for storage. Yeah. Um, or we have customers who we're obviously building up a load and mm -hmm. we, if, we're, if they're moving with us, we don't charge them for storage. Okay, oh, um, well, that's, a, that's a great service. Yeah, so we, we would keep them there until we can make up the load then, free of charge and then move them. And I guess yeah. if you're doing other countries as well, that maybe there aren't so many people moving backwards and forwards, that, that yeah. can take a little longer to... Yeah, to exactly, right exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, so it just gives the... the the customer the opportunity to get everything out of their property here yeah. mm -hmm. um, who aren't necessarily in a rush to receive everything in England yeah. um, and they're happy to wait for us to make up a load okay. um, so we just hang on to it until we've done that and then as soon as we're ready right. we can ship that yeah. over yeah and um, something I, I know people are always scrabbling around for when it comes to, to packaging things is, is the boxes to put things yes. in. is that something you can help with as well um, we we do and we don't. <laughs> um, generally, when we go over to the UK, because it's cheaper to purchase boxes in the UK than it is here, oh, okay. and they're much better quality in England as well. Yeah, um, yeah. So we use double-walled um, 
proper yeah. removal cartons. Um, obviously, it's much more secure to move people's goods um, much than, than, the, than the, 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 supermarket. In the supermarket. Yeah, exactly. Um, so when we go over to the UK and we have space on the vehicle, we will bring boxes ah, okay. back with us, um, which we can sell. Um, so yeah, it all depends on what we've got in stock at the time. But sure. yeah, it, we're just we're trying to find a supplier here in in Spain that we can get yeah, good quality good boxes quality for a, yeah for a reasonable price. So I guess the, the important thing is if someone is looking to move is to, to contact you as, as soon as possible to exactly. allow time to get the boxes to pack exactly. their stuff, get exactly. the house sold, and yeah, exactly yeah, a lot of a lot of different components. Yeah, exactly. Great. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, that, that's that's been absolutely wonderful. Oh, so thank thank you. you so much for, uh, no. for for sharing that with. with thank you for having me. <laughs> um, so, well, there we go. That's a few hints and tips for uh, moving from or to Spain from uh, any country in Europe or, or anywhere else in the world. Um, if you have any other questions that we haven't answered here, don't forget to pop a question in the comments and uh, Chantal will be able to answer that for you. Um, and I'll also put the contact details as well. So if you need to get in touch with Chantal, you can. Also, don't forget to uh, like and subscribe to our channel and uh, hit the notification button so you get informed when new videos are coming as they become live. Um, so thank you for watching. Uh, thank you to Chantal. Thank you. And <laughs> we will see you again soon. Goodbye for now. Bye.